The Sunday School lesson for June 23rd, 2024 is Full Assurances. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 9 through 20. Welcome, viewers and subscribers to my channel, The Backstory and More. I am Audrey. If you are new here, please notice the agenda. I will share the backstory, read the lesson text, offer a brief lesson summary. Please know that every Sunday at 1 p.m., I will release the video for the upcoming Sunday School lesson at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. So be sure to press the notification bell so that every time I upload a new video, you will receive notification. Thank you so much for all that you do to make this channel what it is and what it has the potential to become. The book of Hebrews is unique in the collection of New Testament letters in that the author's name is never revealed. But anonymous doesn't mean completely unknown since the original readers had a personal relationship with that person. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 22 through 24. Throughout the centuries, scholars have speculated that the writer could have been Barnabas, Silas, Apollos, Luke, Paul, or Priscilla. Even so, the book's anonymity does not make it any less God's truth. Not stating the identity of the author was a common practice at that time, especially when the original audience had a connection with the author. Even though we don't know the author's name, the original audience did. There are various ways to outline the book. One way is in terms of five passages of warning. These five are Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, chapter 3, verses 7 through chapter 4, verse 13, chapter 5, verses 11 through chapter 6, verse 12, chapter 10, verses 19 through 39, and chapter 12, verses 14 through 29. Each warning section includes a call to salvation and a vivid description of the consequences if God's way is rejected. Today's lesson text includes part of the third warning. The author's purpose was threefold, to prove that God fulfilled the old covenant by providing a new one, to urge believers to persevere despite suffering, and to warn of the danger of abandoning Christianity and returning to Judaism. The book of Hebrews includes a wealth of biblical doctrine, encouragement, and practical applications for the believer's relationship with God and exalts Christ's preeminence as the author and completion of salvation. Verses 9 through 10. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case, the things that have to do with salvation. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Verses 11 through 12. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy but to imitate those who, through faith and patience, inherit what has been promised. Verses 13 through 14. 
when God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. Verses 15 through 16. And so, after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Verses 17 through 18. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. Verses 19 through 20. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. A brief summary. At this point, the writer issued a stern warning that is the theme of this book. These readers were not new Christians needing to be taught first principles again. The idea that they would turn from the great high priest, Jesus, and go back to the rituals of cleansing rites and dead works of priests descended from Aaron was unheard of. The fact is, by rejecting Christ to return to Judaism, they were considering doing more than changing from one acceptable religion to another. They were rejecting Jesus just as did the Jewish leaders who oversaw Jesus' execution. They would crucify the Son of God all over again. How could they expect to return to him after doing so? The writer was confident that they would not go that far, being convinced of better things ahead of them. When a ship was going into a port at low tide or on a stormy sea, a smaller boat might carry the larger ship's anchor ahead of it to secure it. This is an image of Jesus, our forerunner, dropping the anchor for the soul in heaven for us as he goes ahead of us. In the innermost part of the temple was the Holy of Holies. This place contained the Ark of the Covenant, representing the very presence of God. Only on very limited occasions could even the high priest go behind the curtain that marked the entrance of this sacred place. Only Jesus can do that for us. Thank you so very much for listening and watching. Join me soon for the next backstory and more. Stay safe and may God bless. And remember, every Sunday at 1 o'clock Central Standard Time, I will release the video for the upcoming Sunday School lesson.